Brecon Mountain Rescue volunteers have spent more than a thousand hours searching for Alice across the hills and six miles of river. Yes, if you would, uh, uh, 603 hour. Today, there's a discovery. Okay, we've just located a, a black coat. So we've marked the position of the, of the coat with a GPS and we'll bring it over um, to pass it on to the police. Let's see if it helps with any of the uh, inquiries. I mean, obviously, it's in close proximity to where the car was found. My initial thinking is that it may be a little bit too big, uh, and I hope that's the case. Um, but it's certainly something that we will sort of check out. I mean, you know, it's unusual for it to be where it is. Again, we're still trying to keep an open mind and we're very hopeful that actually all this is safe and well and somewhere completely different, but we have to consider all sort of possibilities and eventualities. The coat from the river is a puzzle. Alice left her own jacket in her car and the coat in the river is too big to fit her. Well, the police turned up last night with a jacket which had been found in the river below Brecon. Um, unfortunately, it's not a coat that we're familiar with and we're sure that wasn't Alice's coat but it did have a slight resemblance to a, a coat that somebody reported seeing her wearing um, when she was seen in um, on, the, on the Sunday but we've yet to have that confirmed. Our overriding feeling is that we, we long to have her back but, but also seeing this countryside and this lane just reminds us of Alice, because this is where she'd love to come. And it's a difficult landscape out there to, to adjust to and to cope with under your own resources. So we understand the difficulty that it must entail, but our hope is still there, that she'll return and come back to where she loves to be. Family liaison officer PC Christine Hindley visits the Vulyamis regularly. She's come today to discuss the latest developments with the jacket. How do you feel the, um, the anniversary checks on Sunday went? Because that was the last time I spoke to you. Was yes, there yes, there? They, they, they went well really, but yeah. we were aware that there weren't very many people walking there around. There weren't many people there. around, whether that's to do with the weather. Yes, it was, it was but of course the day Alice went missing was equally it was, um, yeah. wet and miserable. Did, so. did that prompt any responses at all? We had um, one of the potential witnesses come forward with one that we already knew about, um, just a little bit more information. It was also quite nice to see everybody is, is looking for yes. Alice and everyone yes. in the local area is aware of it. Yes. The anorak that was found in the river yesterday um, we did have a look at it and know that yeah. it's definitely not Alice's, it's not. But, but it does match the description. It was the, the, f it was the fur on That's the That's right, yeah. yes. Somebody as small as Alice, it would have been, it, yeah. in a size 14, yeah. you know, you think, gosh, that, that coat is yeah, swapping right. here, yeah. really. So. Well, we, we can double check, can we, and then we... If, if, if the witness says, no, that's not what I saw, then at least then we can rule that out. Yes, even if it's from a size point of view. Yeah, uh, yeah that's right. As well as yeah, the, yeah. It's, mm. worth, it's worth checking, isn't yes, it? Just, I think just so. to rule it okay. out. If the witness thinks that that is the jacket that Alice was wearing, obviously our, our tactics may change then. Um, searches may be more focused on a particular area, depending on where the jacket was found. But that would be uh, our search team inspector who would uh, decide that then. The family liaison officer is a key member of the police investigation team. Her role is to draw out every potentially useful piece of information. The, the family, they are the people who know the individual best, so the Vulyamis obviously know Alice much, much more than any one of us could, um, so anything that they can tell us could help. It might be that minute bit of detail, that could be the missing bit of the jigsaw. Three weeks since Alice disappeared, and her brother Andrew joins their parents for lunch. You heard about the jacket, did you? No, tell me a little bit more about the jacket. Um, well, they found a jacket in the river below Brecon. 
Andrew has been doing all he can to keep up the search for his sister. Alice is a very, very intelligent girl, great at maths, much better than me. And um, we both play the violin together. Uh, she, very good violinist, uh, grade eight. This is the hill just above where we live, down in Langanada. And this is one of the many places that I've come since Alice's disappearance. Just to get out of the house, to have a look and try and do the most that I can. Most of our searching has been on these hills and in the valleys near the house, in barns and sheds and caravans, anywhere that someone could be hiding or, or staying quite safely. There are always twinkles of the real Alice that, that shine out quite often. And it's just trying to, to bring that person out a little bit more frequently is what we're, what we're trying to do. My thinking at the moment is that she is somewhere out there, staying safe, just taking time to think about where she, what she's doing with her life. And hopefully it's just a matter of time for her to, to emerge and, and show herself to everyone. And we're just trying to encourage her to do that and try and give her a message that she's okay to do so. I see her as a happy person with a sense of humour who gets on well with people when she wants to. And actually when she's not driven by her illness, she's helpful and kind and thoughtful. Yes. She does have a, a, a huge zest, zest for life underneath it all. And we, when we try and strip away the anorexia, because the anorexia does override her personality at the moment, but um, it's this, this lovely sort of wickedness about her. A month after Alice disappeared, the police are carrying out forensic tests on the coat and checking whether witnesses recognise it. They remain as determined as ever to find Alice. We know Alice is a very strong, resilient young girl and for 10 years she's deprived herself of food, warmth, clothing, love, support just through her illness that the nature of her illness has been total self-deprivation and it's given her a huge strength to survive a many a difficult battle and we just hope and believe that maybe she's continuing that battle out there as somebody put it this is she's had lots of adventures along those lines and this may be the biggest adventure that she's undertaken but I think that we haven't I think we've protected ourselves by not reaching a firm conclusion um, when we try to reach a conclusion that gets much more uncomfortable because we, ha we just don't know where she is at the moment and of course we'd, we'd love to know that she's safe wherever she is at the moment I can't see myself living a normal life at the moment, I sort of, that, that, is, that is almost what I'm expecting for me to need to go back into hospital and for me to, you know, refeed again and then go out, get out again and lose weight again. At the moment, that's sort of what I see my life going because I can't imagine living a normal life. Mm -hmm.